Hey guys, it's Sandy with a little vlog trying to recover from three craft catastrophes, which are craft events causing great and often sudden damage or suffering a disaster. And I had a craft catastrophe happen to my desk. I've been working on the book in another room and everything else just kind of has landed. I've had purchases I've made, things I've used, and I just threw it all in piles. So I needed to clean it all up and figured I'd turn the camera on. I had packages that I needed to unwrap as well, and that led to the solution for craft catastrophe number two, which was that as I unpacked all this stuff and started putting everything away, I found a giant stack of stamped images that are all colored, that big stack there, but I had no paper to put them on as card bases, so I had to buy that nice big ream of Mina, and then I started making card bases, card bases, card bases, card bases, because I needed to put these on something and get them out in the mail because they were just burning a hole in my craft room. And I thought I would just let you watch while I'm putting them on the bases. I have glue on them already so you can see the images. A lot of these are ones that I shared on Instagram over the summer and I just never took the time to put them on card bases and do anything with them. I'm not doing anything fancy. I'm just gluing them down. I'm not going to do any dimension or embellishing or anything, but I am going to be sending them out. Actually, these are probably by the time this video goes live, they will all have been sent out. So lucky you if you got one. Sent a whole bunch to different uh, patrons. I sent a whole bunch to random students from classes and stuff. A lot of these cards are related to ones that have been in videos. They're not necessarily that one, but they might have been a precursor, like trying something out and deciding which medium I wanted to do it in. But a lot of it I just did while I was sitting watching TV in the evenings. I just relax by sitting and coloring. I have a whole stack of stamped images and I just spend some time having fun and challenge myself. You know, what kind of lighting do I want to try? What kind of technique do I want to try out? And some of them will turn into videos eventually. And I'll use them with a different stamp set. Some of them will turn into mini classes. And the way I decide on what's going to be in the mini classes, what the topics are, is by what kind of response they get. So if you go to my Instagram and click like on the ones that you like, then those are going to be aiming toward probably doing some classes with. And I'm going to do them around seasonal type things. So like next summer, I'll do maybe one class on beaches and another on underwater so that all the stamps that you get during the summer season you'll have an opportunity to learn some new ways to do scenes for that. Like this one was hugely popular, so it'll probably be part of one of the underwater classes. But there's just a whole ton of ideas I have, and the stuff that I just sit and play with is testing out ideas and seeing, you know, is this an intermediate idea? Is this going to be an advanced idea? That sort of thing. And there are some things like that one I think needs to have a course on perspective before I'm ready to show anybody that. So there's certain ones where I need to have some drawing classes that I'll have to do first. There is a mini Copic course on autumn scenes because a lot of people were asking for autumn scenes. They liked fall trees and especially my patrons convinced me that I should do an autumn class before I moved on to Christmas. And what I do in those classes, if you haven't taken one yet, is I teach you how to do it just with a blank piece of paper. We don't do any stamping, we just do a blank piece of paper and start drawing. And you're just challenged to do it. It's an intermediate class, so it's not for the weak of heart, but I firmly believe you can do this. I really do. I wouldn't be doing this if I didn't believe you could. But in each one of them, I also show you some examples, and then I'll continue to show more examples on Instagram of different ways you can use the same techniques, because I want you to be able to see how you can adapt them in different ways. And once you've taken the classes, you'll recognize things like this one is two different lessons, one for those background trees in the distance and one for the trees up front. They're done differently than they were in the lesson, but they're still the same kind of an idea. And this one has just the trees and the rest of it is just normal coloring of a scene. The next one up was a city sidewalks course. And this one is for Christmas type scenes. So there's structures in them as well as snow. So I wanted to have things where you can use your Christmas images with them and do scenes that are within cities and towns. And I tried to create backgrounds that you can use with a wide variety of stamps. I tried to think of the stuff that's coming out there that I know about 
or stuff that was out last year that you might have in your collection. Uh, this one, this llama, is not even a Christmas stamp. I just colored the birthday packages to look like a, uh, a little bunch of Christmas packages. And this is the new lawn fawn penguins, who I think are adorable, hanging out on the bridge. The other mini course that's available right now is Winter Wonderland, and this is landscapes with a winter theme to them, but you're going to learn how to draw trees that you can adapt later. So one like this, you could just put green grass there instead of snow and have a, a scene you can use any time of year at night. And with a lot of these, you can think of that kind of a thing. So you're going to get more use out of these classes than just during that particular season. But when spring and summer comes, I'll show you techniques for how to make grass look like grass and those sorts of things. But for now, I just focused on doing some stuff for some winter classes and uh, some beautiful winter scenes. And you can just take these techniques and do all kinds of fun things with them. And yes, I realize that giraffes do not exist where it's cold, but I had to color them that way anyway. So craftastrophe number two was solved by that ream of paper. And then this is one of the other purchases that I had made which was I was trying to get a new roll of the mounting tape because I always have to have a second roll of the precious and this new one is different and I thought I'd tell you why it's different because they don't make the other one anymore the other one was thinner this one is thicker so it's wider and fortunately it's also two feet longer because it's also more expensive but they, they don't seem to make it anymore that's what they told Ellen Hudson and I'm very sad about that because it also means that I have to cut that in half because we're going to get way more usage out of this new roll if we cut it in half. Now I've already told you three craftastrophes. This one is a craftastrophe knot. I made one other purchase, or well, several other purchases, but a collection of purchases from IO Cinnamons um, from Ellen Hudson that she had in her shop. Um, and I thought they were hilarious and thought you might enjoy them. And maybe you'll see them on some cards coming up on my Instagram in the future. I just thought they were hilarious. And I'm going to be yelling plot twist all the time from here on because this, that's what happens. Stuff goes wrong. And this one is my going to be my new mantra. Out of the way, world! I've got my sassy pants on today! So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoy this little craziness. There's links for all those stamp sets in the doobly-doo. And I'll see you next time.